Hello everyone, welcome to The Longest Journey. This is a complete adventure classic. I played this a long time ago, and I've actually never replayed this game. I played it once a long time ago, yeah. And I totally loved it, and now I'm... Um, now that the... Now that Dreamfall Chapters was announced and has a uh, Kickstarter out there, uh, it just reminded me of the game, and now I'm going back through and I'm going to replay the first two games, The Longest Journey and uh, Dreamfall. Oh, better take my headset off, the music's getting loud and I won't be able to hear myself. Okay, so yeah, it's a classic adventure game, extremely good. Um, it's gonna be a bit dated, I have no doubt. It was made in, I think, 2000 or maybe 1999, it says copyright 1999. Either way, it's really old. So. Yeah, it's running at 640 by 480 it's low resolution, it's not going to look all that great, but whatever. I'm mostly just playing it for... For the story and the characters, that's really it. I'm not, I don't really care about the puzzles at all. If anything, they're just slightly annoying to me. But it's the story and the characters that I really love about this game. Yeah, this game has a very special place. Um... I'm not sure where I was going with that sentence. This is a very special game to me, because this is actually the first game that I ever truly felt connected with. The first game that I ever cared about the characters. It's the first one ever. And this game kind of started me on my... Pardon the pun, my adventure through adventure games. I'm just reminiscing right now. Hmm. Yeah, um, this game has extremely good voice acting from at least the main character. I don't remember how the voice acting is for any of the other characters, but for the main character, she is extraordinarily well voice acted. Like, it makes... her voice acting basically makes the game. Her voice acting is basically half of the game. If she didn't have good, if she didn't have good voice acting, I don't know if I would even be interested in it, but she does. She has extremely good voice acting. Um, I don't remember... I can't remember the voice actor's name. But she is ridiculously talented. So a couple more things to mention before I get going. God, the music's getting loud again. Is, um... The cutscenes don't record. I record the game using fraps. Um, and the cutscenes just don't show up in the video. The audio for the cutscenes does show up. But the video does not, so you just you just see a black screen. There's nothing I can do about that. It's just a really old game, and that's just how it is. Um, so I don't think there's going to be that many cutscenes. At least I hope not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to explain what's happening in the cutscenes, so that hopefully you don't miss out. But I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. We'll see. Uh, there's supposed to be like 20 minutes of cutscenes, roughly, and it's something like a 40-hour game, so I don't think it's going to be a very big deal. <clears throat> I'm still at the tail end of a cold, by the way, so if I sound slightly stuffy, that's why. But I think my voice is pretty good. Definitely good enough to record. Okay. Oh yeah, and about the voice acting. You know the voice acting in a game is really good when you go into the options menu, and the options make you laugh because of the voice acting. When you change the audio levels for the voice, there's a little audio voice sample that plays so you can hear how loud it is. And just listen. Hello, testing one, one, two, forty-two. <laughs> I mean, the options menu makes me laugh. That's how good the voice acting is. It's ridiculous. All right, let's get going. Begin the journey. Oh, I guess it's the cutscene. Says prologue. A lion is in the streets. I guess that's the name of the prologue. So, you've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life. And I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. 
All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. But perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that to this day are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends. In a tower. In a realm that is no more. And cutscene time. Okay, so you're staring at black, but it's a stone thing? A circular stone thing that's spinning? You can hear it grinding? Just the name of the game, the longest journey. Multicolored design thing on this stone disc thing. I have no idea what it is. Written and produced by art director, etc., etc. Just watching this ornate, carved, sort of glowy stone disc thing spin around. Lead programmer. Now, what the hell am I even looking at here? Some sort of a stone structure? Not the disc thing anymore. Some other stone structure thing. And some other thing, I don't even know what the hell that is. See, even if you're watching, you wouldn't know what it is, because even I don't know what it is. Okay, some person that looks like his... His life energy is leaving out of his chest up to some thing. I have no idea what's happening. So yeah, it looks like they're in some sort of a giant stone tower with this stone disc thing that's spinning around and some person or humanoid that is doing something in the middle of the tower. Wow, this is a long intro cutscene. Now the person's walking? The stone discs are still spinning. It's gotta be great for the viewer, isn't it? Don't you love hearing? Don't you love staring at a black screen? Something happened with the stone disc. Hell if I know what. And I think that's it. Oh no, there's more. Okay, futuristic city. Flying cars. Now we're in April's apartment. That's the main character that we play. She's in bed, sleeping. And now we're switching over into her dream. And now she's in her dream. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I bet that black screen was lovely, hmm? Oh, no. Don't tell me I'm dreaming again. You know, for once, just once, it would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m. Okay. Yeah, I don't think the cutscenes are usually going to be that long. So, sorry for the black screen, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's an old game, what do you expect? Okay, so I'm going to be clicking on absolutely everything in the world just to hear her talk, because I don't know how many times I can say this, but her voice acting is so good! It's mind-bogglingly good. I just want to hear her talk about everything. Tell me about this, April. Postcard pretty. I... Yeah, I don't know if it's pretty. It's kind of scary. 
This world looks dangerous. It looks like it's constantly storming. It's a pristine and picture perfect dawn. What was that? There's a storm heading this way. Even the weather sucks in my dreams. I feel so charmed. <laughs> In my undies. That's so not appropriate. I love it when you can actually click on your own character in an adventure game. Oh god. Change of perspective. Whoa. That's kind of disorienting. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm playing at 640 by 480 since life that's, never looked this good. I'm playing at 640 by 480 since that's the only resolution the game runs at, and it's scaled up to my monitor. That's like 23 inches, so everything is extremely pixely. What's happening? The egg. No. The hell lives in that egg? Oh, it's huge. Perfect. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer 7 years of bad karma or something. It's just a dream, who cares? Well, okay, I care. Let's save it. Um. Oh, I guess that would be talk. What, examine, talk, take? It looks reptilian, but it can't be. It's much, much too big and, and... I don't much care for reptiles. Oh, reptiles are cool. Don't be scared. That sound come from the egg? Boy, that's some chick. I don't think I can get a good grip on it. It's too big and slippery and I might drop it by accident. Alright, let me guess. I need to combine two sticks with sap or something and glue them together and then bake them in the sun using a magnifying glass to bind them or something. <laughs> it's going to have some of those old adventure game puzzles. You know the type. We'll see how frustrating that is. To the stream. Oh yeah, I do hear a stream. I'm an artist, not a botanist, but I'm pretty certain this tree is dead. Or close to it. Yeah, it doesn't look too good. I'm an artist. It's a nest, padded with large scales, very large scales. For some strange reason, I have a feeling I should get the hell out of here before the tenants return. Scales? Hmm. That sound rept reptilian. Hello, stream. Something happened to this rock quite recently, and it probably altered the course of the stream. Hey, maybe that's why the tree's dying. Oh. Yeah, I guess if a tree doesn't get water, it probably will die, won't it? Makes sense. Fresh mountain water. Back in the real world, they'd probably charge 15 bucks a bottle for this. No kidding. I'm an artist. Not something happened to this rock. Something happened Stop to talking. Oh. Oh. I'd like to hear her talk, but I don't want to hear her say the exact same thing that she just said two seconds ago. Hmm. What if I could build something to redirect the water flow across this gap? I just right clicked and this showed up. I have no idea what this is. What is that? Actually, what do I even have up here? Inventory. Oh, that's my inventory. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Everything's so pixely that it's kind of hard to tell if something is a distinct object that I can interact with. I'm pretty sure I've looked at everything here. Oh no, there's a twig. Oh. <gasps> uh. Oh, the suffering we must endure. What? Why do you take such pleasure in torturing us? 
torturing you? Who are you? We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. Okay. Yeah, so what happened? What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the mother and black chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down. And the force of their battle shook the mountain. The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. What's the deal with the egg? Egg? What egg? Oh, of course, the child. <laughs> Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. Who are you again? We are the wood spirit. We come to all trees in the hour of great need to provide comfort and aid in the passing to earth, and to give a voice to those who suffer. Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed. And the Earth will know our shame for all time to come. Well, I should be able to just water it somehow, and then it should be able to just save the egg. It's on the roots, after all, of the tree. Yeah, why are you so down, man? Are you always this glum? We are here because it is too late. The passing has begun. Leave us. Please. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. Alright, gotta get this tree some water. Well, the only thing I have at the moment is a twig, and I don't think that's going to work, will it? Is there anything else I can grab here? Well... I guess we can try the twig. I don't... I don't see how that would work. It's the withered limb of a dying tree. 
feel so guilty. I really do. Uh, how do I... Okay. Oh, okay. Left click. Wait, is that actually going to do something? Huh? Oh, that's to hold something. Okay, I need, like, a little... Something for the water to go inside of. What the hell could I possibly get here that would do that? Um... Was there something in the nest? This is interesting. I've never seen a scale this size before. Yes, there is. Bingo. I'll keep it as a souvenir. That's... It's not going to be used as a souvenir. It's going to be used as a canal. This should do the trick. Perfect. Oh, cutscene. Um, trees getting water, it is coming back to life. And now it's alive. And its limbs are growing and leaves are coming out. Color is coming back to it. It is a happy tree. All right. Talk about instant rehab. Yeah, how you feeling? Talk about instant rehab. How do I talk to it? Or can I? Wow, that is a weird icon. <laughs> oh, this interface is pretty terrible. Oh, aren't old interfaces great? They require like 50 clicks to do anything. What Hello? were they thinking back then? Hello. Leave us be. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. Aren't we forgetting something? Hush, listen. The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah, the baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby. Oh, the egg. Thank the earth. We almost forgot. Wow, talk about forgetful. Jeez, come on. Uh-oh. Uh. Did you... Did it just drop the freaking egg? Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. Something's coming back. What? What was that? Uh-oh. It is you. You have come. You know me? April. Daughter. I have been waiting for you. Waiting? Why? Because it begins here, with you, as it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending, the pain and the joy, the end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is, but you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you, and I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing. And cutscene. The dragon reptile thing is... Okay, it was just staring out, and then that's it. I don't even know why that cutscene was there. Another cutscene! 
some horrible, evil, weird thing is, I guess, attacking. And April fell off. Another cutscene, Chapter 1, Penumbra. What a nightmare. I'm completely exhausted. I must have been tossing and turning all night. It's so hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. Doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. Well, it's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was gonna spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. All right, gotta get to the studio, I guess. Do I have something in my inventory? Cash card. My cash card at the moment is really quite useless. There can't be more than a dollar or two left in it. Oh, okay. So she's poor. I'm not good at taking care of living things, but this plant's doing just fine despite months of neglect. That's amazing, given how hot it apparently is. I'm not good at taking. I'm not good at taking care Stop of. Stop talking. Oh. Whew. Yeah, some, some adventure games, if you click on something multiple times, you get different comments about it. I think this game might only have one comment when you click on something, though. It's just a chair. Let's find out. It's just a chair. I had to borrow some posters from the cafe because I just can't afford to buy any of my own. When I think about it, that's so depressing. I got those posters from the cafe. Never mind, there actually are different comments sometimes. Although it looks like it was just kind of a smaller version of what she said before. So, yeah, I don't think I'll click on stuff multiple times, because it tends to just be d more distracting than actually interesting. Nice view, if you're into brickwork. Yeah, that doesn't look like a very good view. What's out there? Open that window. How's the temperature? Whoops. Let's try that. Whoa, what the hell? That was weird. Look outside. What the f- is that- Is that a sewer? Right outside of her window? Oh my god. <laughs> I think that's- that's a sewer. I would leave that window closed forever. That's gotta smell like shit. Whatever those pipes are spewing out, I know one thing for sure, it ain't water. Ugh. It's a rusty old grill, kept afloat by a rubber ducky. It's a rubber ducky, hopelessly trapped under that rusty old grill. If I remember right, this rubber ducky is tied somehow to, I think, the most ridiculous puzzle in the entire game. I don't remember how to solve it, but it, there's something to do with this rubber ducky and I think food and maybe the seagull or something. It's a seagull. The poor guy looks quite hungry. Yeah. Something to do with food and the rubber ducky and floating downstream or something. The sort of puzzle that you'd have to either solve by literally literally just randomly clicking on stuff for no reason or with a walkthrough. The kind of puzzle that makes no sense, but I can ignore it for now. I don't need to do it just yet. It's a clothesline. Who the hell would dry their clothes here? Okay, I'm not sure why I just did that, but okay. It's a clothesline. I don't know what good that was. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I'm sure it can't be water. It looks like a sewer. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I'm sure it can't. Okay. Let's close that. Yeah, let's close that window. Ah, much better. Shelves. That is an appropriate description. Let's the put on some clothes. It's actually made of real wood and not that synthetic crap that makes me sneeze and itch all over. 
sneeze and itch. What? Uh, I, she must be allergic to something that's in it, then. That's an allergic reaction. It's Constable Guybrush, my toy mo- Oh, ape. He doesn't much like being called monkey. I don't know if that's a reference to something. I think that is a reference to something. I think that's a reference to another adventure game. But I'm not quite sure which. In addition to being an ape, Constable Guybrush plays drums in the Toyberg Police Corps marching band. Go figure. Hmm. That will be useful for something, Empty I guess. Empty cardboard box. That's so not interesting. Eh, it's not very interesting. But when I hear you talk about it, it's fascinating. Seriously, is it just me that finds the voice acting so good that I could literally hear her talk about anything and it would be interesting? Anything. Tell me about these drawings. It's a bunch of drawings I drew when I was a kid. I don't even know why I brought them here. They mean absolutely nothing to me. I could only carry one suitcase with me when I left home. There was so much I would have loved to bring, but c'est la vie. At least it was a clean break with my past. I guess when all my hard work starts paying off, I'll get a house and fill it with all kinds of new junk. The past. Who needs it? Alright, so my wardrobe's sort of chic deficient, but I can't afford to be cutting edge. Useful, practical, and cheap is my shopping mantra. When fame and wealth come knocking, I'll buy a wardrobe the size of an ocean liner and fill it with clothes for a million bucks. Right now, I'll try to focus on my work. Good idea. S can I change or? When fame and when fame and wealth come knocking. When 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 when, fa when fame and wealth come knocking. When fame and. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> am, am I supposed to go out to the studio in my underwear? I will, but that seems kind of weird. You know, it doesn't even look like underwear. It actually looks kind of just like like exercise clothes or something. Yeah, it really doesn't look like underwear. That's my desk. So, theoretically, that's where I'm supposed to do my work. I think my muse has departed me for greener pastures though, because lately, inspiration's been fleeting at best. Hmm. Painter's block. I think she's a painter. Or a drawer. A drawist. Is that even a word? I have no idea. Artist. How about that? I'll just say artist. Still just shelves. Really? You sure? Tell me again. Still just shelves. Okay, it's still just shelves. It's just a chair. Oh, stop telling me obvious things. I want long, complicated descriptions of everything. Tell me, where did you get this chair from? How much did you pay for it? Do you like it? It's just a chair. Oh, fine. <laughs> Seriously, I'm going to click on everything in the freaking game. Everything. Everything. It's a picture of me and my friends. Wait, I took the picture? Why? Why did I take the picture? It's a picture of Charlie, Emma, and me, in Florence Park. Marcus took it about a month ago, before it got real hot. My on-again, off-again diary. We've had a turbulent relationship, her and I. Wait, I could talk to my diary? What? Dear diary, note to self. Dreams of talking trees and dragons aside, it's still no excuse for talking to inanimate matter in the real world. So quit it! <laughs> oh, I love the writing in this game. It's great. It's so good. Hmm. I've been keeping a diary intermittently since I was five years old. Not the same one, of course. I started this one, I think... April of this year. It's my diary. There's a loose sheet of paper in here. Timesheet. Hmm. 
Hey, it's my timesheet from the cafe. I completely forgot I put it in here. Good thing I found it, because I'm broke. Oh. That's helpful. It's my can diary. I, can I open it? Can I open the diary? It's my diary. I guess I can't. I'm part of the should be reading more but life's too short generation. We embrace our illiteracy. The <laughs> last book I read was How to Seduce the Man of Your Dreams. Ugh. Now, if I can just find a man to dream about, I'll be all set. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. God, that thing, that thing looks so ghetto. Look at how rusty it is. That's my work. It's supposed to be a portrait of my life study teacher, but I think he might disagree. <laughs> that fan is supposed to keep the room nice and cool in the summer. Sure. Yeah. It's at least, oh, one quarter of a degree cooler in here when it's on. Yeah, I don't think the thing's gonna do shit. The damn thing doesn't even stay on. Why does it keep shutting off? That would drive me nuts, the noise of that damn fan. Alright, I think that might be it, although I still need to change clothes, don't I? Then what the hell, let's go out into the hallway. I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. Might be. Okay, so she does it on her own, I guess. Yep. Hey, babe. babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Wow, okay. Zach, listen, I I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? Hmm. Yeah, I was doing just fine until you came along, you grease-haired douchebag. I was doing just fine until you came along. What's that? Uh, hey, uh, listen, <laughs> I was thinking maybe you and I could hook wow. up tonight, go to the pavilion or something. We could pop a few raptures, do a little close dancing. How about it? No. Nope. No, that's not gonna work, Zach. What? You got something against me, babe? Do I offend you in some way? Oh, no. I just don't think it's a good idea for us to be... together like that. Hey, whatever. You'll come crawling back when you realize your mistake, babe. I'm out of here. Okay, bye, douchebag. What an asshole. Hmm, look at this plant. Is it real? Organic plastic. Nope. It grows, and it converts carbon dioxide into oxygen. Just like real plants, but it doesn't need nourishment of any kind. Convenient, but disturbing. Oh, it actually grows and can... Wow, that's amazing, actually. That's incredible. What the hell is this thing? It's a fact, as in F-A-C-T. Free access terminal. The thing looks like it runs on steam. Computer. Voice interface is not installed. Please use the touchscreen interface to communicate with this free access terminal. Oh, okay. Why not consider a very reasonable upgrade? In addition to a voice interface, true holo display technology and Instacredit compatibility. No, I'll just use my hands, thanks. You are missing out on a great opportunity. Oh my god. If you upgrade now... Hold on. You understood that. <laughs> you have a voice interface installed already. Why would I pay to have another one installed? Current voice interface is for sales purposes only. If you take advantage of this very affordable upgrade today... No, really. You... This terminal doesn't belong to me. Noted. Please refrain from voice communication in the future. 
or you will be reported to the fact FUB and charged for processing time. FUB? Fair Use Bureau. They are authorized to carry deadly arms. Well, whatever. Sorry. What a lovely terminal. So can no, I actually use it? I don't think I'd appreciate the FUB barging in on me right now. Okay, screw that thing. Charlie's apartment. Who's Charlie? Charlie's apartment. His place is twice as big as mine, with a private bathroom and a huge bed. I guess he likes his creature comforts. I'm going to knock on his door for no particular reason. Charlie! Nobody home. Damn. That's Zack's room. I've never been in there, and I pray I never will. All right, let's get out of here. It's kind of unsettling Whoops. to be so aware of myself all the time. Breaking the fourth wall a little bit there. It's actually, I think it's a good thing to break the fourth wall like that a bit in an adventure game, because you really can't help but notice how ridiculous some things are, like the fact that you're clicking and looking at everything in the environment. I mean, no one does that. You have to be a bit self-aware about it, otherwise it just kind of, kind of seems extra ridiculous. Corkboard. Hmm, what's on there? Annual summer blowout at the Fringe Cafe, Friday, August 4th, 8 p.m. Free food, live performances by Royn Dale, Harlequin Masquerade, The Go-Getters. Tickets available at the bar, $10 only, spread the word. No thanks. Pizza and movie night, Monday, July 31st, BYOS. BYO what? So? <laughs> BYOS, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> Look, it's Monkey Boy. I'm sorry, but big sweaty jocks do not turn me on. I'll take a nerd any day. I love the fact that you can click on everything individually. That's so awesome. I love that. Be considerate. Keep the volume down after 11 p.m. Fiona. Common Room Duty Roster, July 27th. April and Emma. Oh joy, manual labor, my favorite. San Francisco. Love to go there someday. Someday soon, hopefully. And that's it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Is she just watching various still images of nature? Those are just like wallpapers. Is she just staring at images of wallpapers? The omnipresent screen. I don't pretend to know how it works, but all the data apparently passes through tiny little black holes in the fabric of our dimension. <laughs> you know? That really freaks me out when I think about it. Holy crap, that's a huge matchbook. Look at that thing. Jesus. It's a matchbook. That is the biggest matchbook I've ever seen in my life. Shelves. Wonderful. How you doing, Fiona? That's Fiona, my landlady. She's all right. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. 
but she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so, but I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh, yes. The school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live. Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. Where is everybody? How many people even live here? I only saw two other doors. But there has to be more. Yeah, there has to be more. Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind why you, did, she's why not did you tie literally her up? tied up, of course. <laughs> Although, that is a tempting thought. Mm. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job, thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping, and Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Good weather? Isn't it hot as hell? Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then. Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for, Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. It's a little bit strange that I'm asking this person about someone who's my best friend, apparently. But let's roll with it. Tell me more about my best friend that I don't know anything about. Anything else you can tell me about, Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt, and although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here. Next to you and Charlie, she's my favorite tenant. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? 
Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. Yeah, tell me about Zack. What's up with Zack Lee? Zack? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. Well, I think I could just talk to her for like a half hour. Let's do it. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job. I love Venice. And I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. See, moments like this where you just have tons of dialogue, they would be they would be agonizing and no one would care to do it if if either the voice acting was bad or the writing was bad. But thankfully, the writing is excellent and the voice acting is also extremely good. And given those two things, those two things make moments like this just wonderful. It's interesting just to hear them talk. Because they're saying interesting things and they're saying them well. It's amazing how important voice acting is and how often it's neglected. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Can you tell me something about the border house? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? A boarding house, so that's what this is. What made you decide to run a boarding house? That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know, quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. 
Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory. But when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council. And after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. What inspired the name Border House? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes, and we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. I also take care of the day-to-day -day management of our tenants, like deciding whether or not to let someone rent a room. And, of course, the unpleasant business of booting someone out. I thought you enjoyed that part. Yes, all right. In some cases I do, but not always. It can get quite messy. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. I might actually be here for literally a half hour, and I'm totally okay with that. Oh, I can't believe they actually wrote this much dialogue and recorded it. I wonder how many hours of dialogue this game has. Hundreds, maybe? What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone with an interest in local affairs. What I do know is that this whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area and that about 100 years ago, they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect, aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. Yeah, I bet that does stink. What's the story behind my apartment? Your apartment? It's more a room than anything else. Not much more than a large closet, really. It's not that small. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it's cheap and it's on a nice floor. I hope you're happy there. I like it. It's convenient. And it's got a... Uh, an interesting view. Interesting, yeah. That's nice to hear, darling. As for the story behind it, mm, no unexplained deaths or hidden pirate treasures, I'm afraid. Just a long string of students on a tight budget. Do you like Newport? The city? Well, I stay in Venice most of the time. It's easy to forget we're just a tiny little pocket in the middle of a sprawling urban wasteland. But do I like it? I think Newport is one of the great cities of our age. Love it or hate it, you can't argue with that. And which one is it? Love? Or hate. I haven't decided yet, darling. Ask me again in another 15 years. Perhaps I'll have an answer then. <laughs> Tell me some more about the Border House. What precisely do you want to know? Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, What darling. the hell? Okay, I guess there's no more to learn about the Border House right now. Awkward. Maybe that's a it's either like a broken dialogue tree, or maybe later I need to ask her something, but I don't know what to ask her yet. So I'll just leave that for now. Okay. I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. I'd better get going. Off to school. Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. 
For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? All right, let's see if I can finish up my project. Is there anything else to look at here? I don't think so. We have a nice view of the bridges from this window. More fans. Proper air conditioning was apparently never a viable alternative for the contractor. How is Fiona watching that? That is literally just a slideshow of images of nature. With no audio. That's like the most boring thing ever. <laughs> it's so boring. Emma picked this table up at a flea market for $10 last month. That's $9 more than it's worth. Hmm. I guess she doesn't like it. Okay, let's go outside. Can you run if you double click? Oh, you can. Okay. Oh, wow, that's a big mural. I love this mural. Even though the motif is a little trite. I mean, fairy tale forests and magical dragons? Still, it's pretty. I wonder what happened to the artist. Probably making a bundle from cheesy fantasy calendars and book covers. <laughs> <coughs> Ugh. Excuse me. <coughs> 